This is a making of Cinderella Cat. I'm uh, Ivan Cappiello, and uh, along with my four, three colleagues uh, that are Sun Rock, uh, Dario Sansoni, and Marino Guarnieri, we are the four directors of uh, this movie. Uh, and uh, we made this movie with the same team that released our pre previous uh, animated feature that was called uh, uh, The Art of Happiness and uh, won the European Film Award in 2014. So for the next movie, uh, that is named Cinderella the Cat, uh, it was the first animated feature ever presented in uh, a standard movie festival. Venice Film Festival is the oldest film festival of the world and uh, never admitted in, uh, in competition and animation movie and this was the first time so we were ec very excited to be there and we also had uh, thank you <laughs> and I think it's also the first animated feature ever running made in Blender so made in, yeah. and uh, this was uh, our uh, international movie after the, the screening uh, this is from Variety and this is for The Hollywood Reporter, and uh, this was great. So before going on in the presentation, I would like to share with you the official trailer. It will be uh, in Italian, but subtitled in English, so I think you can understand it. Can you lower the lights, please? Quindi ci hanno aspettato venisse questo giorno. Guarda, guarda. Così doveva essere. Io dovevo stare al posto tuo. Però vedi, noi siamo solo la prima parte della storia. Il meglio deve ancora venire. Il matrimonio è l'unico vero strumento di rivoluzione sociale. Ora la bimba è sotto la mia tutela. Io torno a prenderti mia. Ti porterò via da qui. Se non ci fossi io a badare a te, tu faresti una brutta fine. La nave ci osserva, ci registra, ci elabora, ci rimette in scena. Ci sono da Grazie a Dio ed altri per ricordarti di chi Mamma, come so bello! Molto presto di voi resterà solo un vecchio ologramma sbiadito. Portami adesso dove era Paolo e tu dove eri quando era tutto nero mentre accendevo la Madonna un altro cielo. Senza l'amore viviamo lo stesso e se mi sbaglio tu dimmelo adesso, dimmelo adesso. Noi dove siamo? Sopra una nave che porta lontano ma senza l'amore noi dove andiamo? Noi dove andiamo? Thank you. Thank you. So last year I was here and uh, I showed you some basic stuff about how we did the backgrounds and some uh, lots of rigging process and so on. So um, this year I want to start showing you something more. But before going on, I'd like to show you the actual sequence I was talking about last year. So I can, can you please lower the light again? It's about three minutes, then we talk about how we did it. Signor Basile? Ciao, papà. Ah, siete voi due. Avete ritrovato la scarpetta della mia principessina? Eh, niente da fare, signore mia. Non ricordo dove l'ha persa. Non lo so. Eh, non disperare, piccola mia. Io sono sicuro che il signor Gemito la ritroverà. Visto che non possiamo muovere un passo senza che lui ci stia tre piedi. Eh, guardi che non ho mica deciso io di farle da scorta, signore. Eh, ma io neppure. E questa faccenda del polo tecnologico... Polo che... della scienza e della memoria. Sì, è, è, è questo progetto che l'ha messa in una posizione scomoda. Eppure io ci sto a mio agio. Ci lavoro da una vita. Ho ottenuto la concessione del porto per 80 anni e ci sono già tante persone al lavoro. È proprio questo il punto, signore. A me non piacciono queste persone che le girano intorno. Benissimo. E allora, si tolga di torno. No, andiamo, dico sul serio, dovrebbe prendere meno alla leggera certe cose. Lei è sempre serio, Gemito, sempre turbato. Ma oggi è un giorno di festa, può risparmiarmi i suoi toni gravi almeno il giorno del mio matrimonio? Eh, eh. Ha proprio una brutta cera, sa? Mm. È vero, ha ragione. 
Ma questa nave... non capisco. Non mi sembra il posto adatto ad una bambina. Accade una cosa che non mi so spiegare. Queste? Ma no, tutto questo è... è magnifico, stupefacente, signore. E io non ho la minima idea di come funzioni, ma me ne faccio comunque una ragione. E allora? Lo so che non ha senso. Ma a volte ho la sensazione di vedere cose... mai accadute. La nave ci osserva, ci registra, ci elabora, ci rimette in scena. E insomma? Insomma, lei pensa di essere qui adesso. E invece magari è solo un ologramma sbiadito. Un vecchio ricordo che galleggia nel suo futuro. Lei si prende gioco di me, signore. Eh, dal giorno in cui ha messo piede su questa nave, lo ammetto. Ma almeno le ho strappato un sorriso. E <ride> eh, va bene. Ora però dovrà prendermi sul serio. Sono le sei, la sua sposa sarà quasi pronta, la cerimonia sta per cominciare e lei è ancora qui. E eh, tu a così modici. Eh, eh, ciao, amore mio. Te resterai buona con Gemito finché papà non ha finito? Sì! Ah, Gemito, disattiva lei le comunicazioni con l'esterno? Si ricorda come si fa. Sì, ma Ciao, per, papà, perché le ha no. riattivate? Eh, tuo padre è incorreggibile, mio. Sì. Thank you. So, this time I want to focus on how we develop the look of the movie. Um, first, we have to search for key elements. Maybe you have uh, recognized someone in, uh, in the previous clip. So, first, clean fills and gradients. We use uh, this kind of uh, filling. There's no uh, lots of texture, it's just basic filling. We are looking for uh, overlaid paint strokes, so the strokes is not on, uh, on the same uh, pixel each frame. And uh, we are looking for uh, uh, fragmented brush strokes. Uh, and um, as a final step, we have this uh, uh, underpaint layer that is a, a living underpaint layer. And you may have recognized it on, uh, on the scene. Okay, so which part of the, product, of the pipeline we, we use? Um, in our work, uh, as we said, we start with the, having the, without texture and having vertex color to paint the mesh. So this is a this benefit I discussed uh, last year, um, but it also affects uh, the, the polygonation, the, the modeling, is affected by vertex uh, coloring because you cannot uh, uh, draw a line if you don't have vertex there. So we have uh, uh, what I call an high quality low poly. It means it has low poly, but it's not uh, strict like uh, you have uh, to be not using triangles or so. We do use triangles in some cases. Obviously, we don't use it uh, in um, the particular deforming uh, angles or where the loop uh, has to be continuous, but we use triangles. And I'll show you uh, behind me uh, what a model look like, looks like in this, uh, in this kind of look. This is the actual model we use. Uh, this is the topology. It's low, but uh, every detail is in the topology already. And um, when it comes to uh, this uh, cloth folds, you can uh, see clearly which we, what I'm talking about with triangles and uh, clean topology. Uh, we also use to detail topology more in the parts that are always uh, um, more visible, like, you know, when you made a, a shot, you can have a distant shot, so every, every polygon can count a little, or you have a medium or close shot, and then this might probably be the face or the ends or the, or the feet, so that is the part, are the parts that are more detailed in the model. Um, about the rigging, since we have a really low poly models uh, with high details, the rigging is uh, almost in some cases a one to one bind with bones. So you always have uh, what you see is what you get because that, that kind of vertex is moved by the exact position of the bone. Okay, this is how uh, a scene look in uh, the animator. We try to be as much as we see uh, what you see is what you get. So uh, this is uh, the rig moving, and then you will see uh, the animator start animating or looking at the playback. We basically split the character from the background, and the background, as you remember in my last presentation, is linked in another scene. So it's a scene linked in this file, and the object is linked through the two scenes you will see in a second. 
uh, this way the animator can focus on the only animation, okay? This is the background, and we can link the background elements to the other scene. We usually use the second part of the layers for the background, so the animator can easily uh, disable the view and have a fast and clean update. As I told you last year, we worked on Rigify. Uh, we worked a lot on Rigify to make this movie. And uh, as I promised, uh, these uh, uh, new features are merged already in Blender. What are the new features? So we have new meta rigs. Uh, you may see animals, uh, lots of people are starting using it. That's new uh, advanced gener generation options. It means you can have multiple rigs generated by Rigify in a single scene. Uh, you can select, easily select which rig has to be overwritten with the new one. We have revamped the layer system, so you can, in the meta rig, define uh, bone groups and uh, uh, selection sets and have it automatically merged in the final rig. Uh, we also had um, lots of features for our limbs. So we have uh, the FKIK snapping, the rotational pole is now merged with the new system, so you can easily select which one kind of rotation pole you want. Uh, we have uh, new animation tools that can easily transfer animation in any time range from FK to IK and vice versa. And we also a, a rotation convert them from quaternion to Euler and vice versa. And uh, more important for me, the wiki. There was uh, ever been a wiki for Rigify. We have completed the task. So uh, I, I think it would be useful if uh, someone, before posting bug reports, there are not bugs or feature requests, start looking in the wiki. Please do it. OK, for more updates on Rigify, we have another panel today at uh, 2 PM. Uh, rigging is also affecting modeling, too, because uh, some, we, we often use uh, um, rigging with modifiers. I mean, uh, if I want, anyone has ever been in this mess before, generally when you bend something, it tends to compress. But uh, what happens if you uh, bend a plane? A plane is not doing anything, and if you extrude it later with a solidify modifier, you can have now a bended, exactly bended without compression mesh. And moreover, you have this bonus feature that is you can have three materials in the slot you can use for, for your um, model. And uh, this is very handy for us for clothing. Uh, you may have seen it. We have a, a surface, a rim, and uh, inside we have three different tones of, uh, of uh, the color. And we use this modifier. Moreover, if you use this uh, technique, and we use a lot, you can also reuse the, the obtained cage to deform an actual mesh. So you, you have no limits for that. And this way, you see the. Our pipeline is a bit uh, a mess because everything contributes to the final image. You have to model in a certain way to color. You have to model in a certain way to rig. You have to rig in a certain way to use that model and so on. Going over, how do we get to final frame? Um, first, we have to split the process in passes. Uh, a bit of it was covered last year, so I will skip the first part. Is, uh, uh, we create uh, this image. This image, that is the poster for the movie, is also made in Blender. And uh, basically, we have uh, the background and the foreground and the other, the, the shoe and the other kid on the reflex. But uh, what we do here is a standard color pass, shadow pass for the background, the freestyle line pass, and the basic proxy paper pass because we need some kind of a rotational um, approach when you have camera moving or the, you know, the, the ceiling falling. Uh, and then we have specific masks. We used that for, in this case, the blood on the, on the floor. And the more important Z-depth pass, I will talk about this later, because uh, as you remember in the last conference, um, when the, the backgrounds are still are almost paint over, because the, the, uh, the artist just merges these layers, the output lasers in a painting program and paint is over. But sometimes the backgrounds are animated too, and so we treat them like we treat the characters. And let's see how we do this. We have the basic flat output again, the freestyle line pass again, and the z-depth. And this is the most important pass for the rest of the process. Um, so, Merging it up uh, combines a lot of compositing. Uh, for the movie, we didn't make, uh, we didn't succeed in using Blender Compositor because it tends to be really slow on this kind of process. But in the whole time of production, I succeeded in merging 
our pipeline inside the compositor, and we hope to talk with uh, the foundation, Ton, and the others to see what's, what's possible to do it to bring it in uh, real time, or at least in the faster compositor process. So, as you remember, I talked about overlaid print strokes. How do we do that? We take the, fl the flat color pass and uh, we bring in this node, uh, group, this node group I created. Um, this is special node group you can see as uh, some uh, uh, canvas resolution. This defines uh, the, the resolution of the noise used to deform the image. And then you can have this uh, kind of effect. It's, it's very slight here. You can see it. The image is uh, a bit deforming. Show you again. I will uh, push more over. Okay, now you can see it more. Okay, and then we have to fragment this kind of uh, jaggy brush. To do that, I use the same node but with other option. Here is what happens with the new fragmentation. Uh, yeah. Okay, so the node what accepts as input the image to process. The canvas resolution defines the, the size of the texture we are using for this sorting. This is the, the first stroke uh, that is going to outline the jaggy edges, and this is the fragment edges. And we have also two debug passes here to see which, which is the texture is deforming now. This is the first deforming wave. This is the second deforming wave, so you can always check uh, what's, what's affecting your image. Then we can merge it together. This is the result of the two. And now that we have these jagged lines, we have to compose it with the original image. And this was, uh, again, another task, because uh, the standard mix node in Blender doesn't have the lighter color mix. Uh, the lighter color mix does a, a cool thing. It compares the, uh, the two uh, values of the pixel between the two images and choose the, the brighter one. So you have one or another, not a mixing of two. And this is the result. I can go back and forward. You can see the image start to recover some of the detail we have lost. And uh, we have this factor value of a factor that uh, affects, oops, affects the, okay, the borders. Okay, you can see the edge here. When it's 0.5, you have both of the distortion. Then we go on to how the node works. And I think it's OK, but just I didn't tell you that Keep Original is uh, uh, basically making this node work as a standard mix node. So you, if you want to recover totally the first image, because in some cases, like when the character is very small, you want to keep the detail there, you can recover by this. Then we have the lighting. The lighting in this uh, movie is make all uh, in post process. There's no lighting, uh, uh, any light or shadow affecting characters. They all hit the background, but the characters are all, everyone uh, is a, a 2D light. So the basic uh, light we use uh, in the 2D is uh, this uh, kind of offset lighting. I re recreated this node, uh, it is pretty easy, but you can offset in the X and Y of the alpha channel, so you have this uh, kind of rim effect, and you can uh, uh, customize the colors of the shadow in the light, and you can affect only the light, or only the shadow leaving in the light the original color. This is how the node is done. Uh, and. Um, in some cases, or especially in this case, it's not enough for us. So we have to create a node that makes us do this. We use the Z depth to do so. That's uh, started with a discussion with Alessandro Rack, the other director, uh, that told me what happens if we offset a 3D image. And after a bit of tricky calculation, I obtained this pass. These are just two Z depth paths offset each other, so it's not like a normal lighting, because uh, you have occlusion in this uh, kind of effect, and we can use it, uh, this is the standard pass, this is the contrast pass, and we use it like uh, using these two values, that are like a color ramp uh, output. And this is uh, uh, the medium filter, we use it for uh, blending the edges together. Let me show you more in detail. Uh, our models are uh, uh, in flat shading, 
and this is uh, unconventional, I know, but we think uh, that this could be like the brush strokes we can have in the mesh. So uh, if we want, we can blur them to have this kind of gradient effect and use it in some scenes. I'll show you another three minutes of the movie where this effect is particularly uh, visible. Cenerentola! Cenerentola! E mi si risponde stai atto. Adesso vorresti farmi credere che stavi già qua. Non te ne devi andare girando. Devi stare al posto tu, hai capito? Mi sembra sì. E poi fai di testa tua. Vieni, aiutami a chiudere il vestito. Questi sono i tuoi esercizi. E sei pure soddisfatto. Tieni una scrittura di merda. Ti dovevi esercitare di più invece di perdere tempo in giro. Oh, hai finito con questo vestito! Senti, ascoltami bene, Becciore. Tu devi fare le cose che ti dico io, le devi fare per bene. Domani tu compi 18 anni. E a me mi pare che ti stai montando un po' la testa. È così? No. No. Ma tu ti pensi che fai festa a me? Il fatto che tu diventi maggiorenne non vuol dire proprio niente, perché sei ancora una bambina, sei ignorante, non sai manca mettere una firma. Se non ci fossi io a badare a te, tu faresti una brutta fine. Perché te l'ho già spiegato, tu sei una ragazzina con dei problemi, giusto? Ecco, e allora ascolta bene quello che ti dico di fare. Stanotte dopo il pezzo delle sei ore devi andare a sistemare tutto come sai tu. Siamo in tesa, piccere? Vabbè, adesso vai a rassettare la mia stanza e ricordati di lavarti le mani prima di toccare le mie cose. process. I wish I could. <laughs> I wish I could control the slider of a color ramp from a node group. This is not possible in Blender because, as you can see, node ramp node only accepts this value. So I have to build a my custom ramp node group to use in the node group. This is a pretty easy math. Uh, I'm not a scientist. Uh, I did this in uh, a couple of hours. So I think it could be easily implemented right in Blender. Again, we use a lot of the depth, but the information uh, has to be clamped to be used. I wish to uh, use the normalized node or something like that to have uh, this value clamped between the near and the far clip plane, but uh, I didn't, so I have to make my own normalization node. It's pretty easy again. 
was not a complex task just for nodes. And I wish to control the control color, the lift color gamma node from uh, a color uh, a, a node group. Again, I would uh, like to add the driver here, here, and here, and it's not possible because when you go outside node group is not updated. I think it's a, a depth graph limitation. I hope in 2.8 will be resolved, but I, again, I had to write my own <laughs> color lift gamma gain node, and it was a bit more messy. But it works, and moreover, to make it work correctly, since we uh, use, a, if you want to lit uh, an image, you want to go uh, over the black, the, the white, uh, and you have to impute a value like two. The RGB node can uh, make uh, impute a value uh, above one, but uh, you cannot slide it because you have to manually enter. So I created this uh, little node just to pass the values there. Then I wish I could output a freestyle pass. This is very surprising for me why it's not there, but it's solved by uh, using a color pass without freestyle active and the freestyle pass with, with freestyle only active. Then, my own bugs. <laughs> okay, the Z light node has some bugs. I, I show you, look at this part of the clip I show you. This is an actual turnaround made with the Z light node. Uh, can you lower the light a bit, please, so we can see better? Okay, you can see there are two kind of lighting uh, affecting the mesh, and it's all done in compositing. There's no, nothing else there. A more a freestyle preset we created, and uh, the, I uh, don't know if you can see it, there is a painted uh, overlay. Okay, so if you have noticed that up there, there was a, an error. This is the error. How do we solve this? We uh, render it a greater resolution, but with the sensor, we keep the image at the same position, and then we cut out the part that is jagged, because it only uh, happens on the image borders. Uh, now I have uh, an extra clip. Uh, I don't know if I have the time to show it. Don, uh, I have time? No, okay. So I skip it. I, sk I skip it, and I go to what's next. Um, what's next? We tried a lot uh, to do this in real time. These are some examples of what we did in real time in the, in the viewport. Uh, we get quite close, but then we, we have not, not any access to the um, pixel filters, so we abort that test, but... But you can have 10 more minutes, no talk after. Yeah, okay. Ah, okay. Okay, so I'll go back to show you the clip. Uh, <laughs> okay, this is uh, happening in real time, so uh, the animator can easily do this, and uh, is, uh, I think it was a good compromise, but uh, it was too tricky to go further with pixel shaders, so we aborted this test. Uh, let's see, I want to show you when it works, because uh, it's also affecting the depth value here. Okay. There was a, uh, also an, uh, a line style made through ambient occlusion here, through screen based ambient occlusion. This can work uh, too. Okay. Uh, I will go back to the clip of three minutes. Uh, I advise it uh, uh, contains some mild violence and uh, <laughs> some bad words. So uh, if, if there are child watching, maybe. <laughs> Salvatore, non lo so, ma non c'è sta un'alternativa, un'altra soluzione. E cosa? Voglio dire, mm. a me chi sta mi pare proprio un bravo uomo. <ride> ma io vecchio. Tieni 50 anni, non ne hai picchi. È ancora un uomo tutto d'un pezzo, con un sacco di bei progetti per questa città. Oh, ma no, ho valore a scemenza. E cosa sta a ridere? Che ci sta a ridere, Angie? Mettere un polo della scienza dentro al porto di Napoli è come dare la forchetta d'argento ai morti di fame. Significa che li vuoi sfoltere, che li vuoi far incazzare. Questa è la gente che ci ha rovinato. Sono nate mie sa ricchezza e pensano di sapere di cosa ha bisogno la gente perché hanno avuto tempo e sa leggere due libri. Due libri? Quello tiene una biblioteca che quando sta nata. Vabbè. 
Comunque, secondo me è un uomo rispettabilissimo. Nanni. Oh. Guarda, mamma. Ma tu fossi innamorata adesso, già me. Guarda che innamorata. <ride> Però mi fa tenerezza. E poi penso che mi vuole bene veramente. <ride> che bisogno teniamo noi di farlo fuori? Io a uno come questo me lo rigiro bene e meglio. Quante volte l'abbiamo già fatto, su servizio? Io a questo lo trasformo in un burattino. Non è tu, ma ascoltami bene che Salvatore lo giusta la prima volta avverti a seconda e spara. Io non so se mo che te mi sento. Ma comunque, a mezzogiorno Don Vittorio Basile è un uomo morto. E tu, Angelica Carannante, sua sposa, che appartieni però a me, anima e corpo, e questo è un fatto. Sarai la sua vedova. Eppure questo è un fatto. Ci siamo in te. Sì, non è. Eh. Eh, ma non fa che la faccina, che queste sono cose che abbiamo deciso insieme. Io quello che faccio lo faccio pensare a noi, a me, a te. In H1. Eh. Pensando a quando saremo ricchi, importanti, felici. Io sarò un re. E tu sarai la mia regina. Salvatore. Ma quanto mi fa aspettare ancora? Non mangio le gambasine. Ricordatevi che da stanotte voi siete una signora. Uh, lo volete onorare almeno un po' con questo lutto. E la creatura? Che facciamo che la creatura? Aspettiamo che sia maturo per filmare, poverino. E chi se l'ha dato tutto il studio in bio? Oh, di una sei figlia, Angelica. Non è più, non è meno, che cagna. Ciao, 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 ciao. E forse un po' che si ti ha chiesto. I wanted to show you this scene because it contains a really cheap trick. Uh, how many of you succeeded in rendering freestyle in the reflections? No one. <laughs> okay, neither do we. <laughs> so we uh, created a, cheap, a really cheap trick. We just recreated the, the other side of the, of the mirror and rendered it uh, normally, and then we clipped in the, in the scene. It's a, a normal uh, movie trick. You do like that when you want to see the camera in the reflection. Okay, uh, the last thing is, um, okay, we are trying to make some more experiments. This is an experiment made in cycles. Uh, we are trying to experiment about the uh, painting on the backgrounds. So uh, we had this, this is the normal uh, rendering of this spot, but this spot is, uh, is made with the uh, Play, doesn't play. Okay, there's a uh, texture here that is done uh, procedurally. It makes these uh, paint strokes on uh, every mesh you, you have without UVs, and we use a lot to uh, create this uh, kind of, uh, of shader. And this is also working with our ZPass node, so you can also use it uh, like that. I don't know if it's playing. No, okay. That's all. <laughs> Thank you.